Welcome to another episode of the Valentine Show. Expecting you guys are having a wonderful and blessed day. On today's episode, I'm gonna be rambling here a little bit. I'm gonna be talking about the legacy. What is the legacy of Donald J. Trump? How was he as a president? Did he did he fail? Was he successful? I'm gonna give you my honest opinion. If you if 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 you don't get um what I'm about to tell you right now from an individual when he's talking about Donald J. Trump, you could just write him off as a partisan, uh, a, a person that's partisan and that is, has been infused with the liberal hatred that uh, has come from the Democratic Party and the media. If they don't give you a balanced, uh, a balanced, um, explanation of who Donald Trump is, you, you could say that person is either two two things, either ignorant or biased and uh, hateful, plain and simple, because Donald Trump is one of the most beloved presidents of all times and one of the most hated president of all time. And that precisely is my ranking of the president that was Donald J. Trump if he doesn't return in 2024. Okay, let's start with the good. There's going to be seven things here on this list. And then the bad is just one thing. But uh, this thing um, cost him dearly. Number one, there was no new war started under the President Trump. President Trump had a non-interventionist uh, policy uh, from the beginning. Um, he didn't want the United States to be involved in policing the world. That has been the traditional role of the United States, um, whether it be voluntarily or whether it uh, that the United States had to or has to be the police of the world. Because if, if the United States is, is not the police of the world and is not a world leader, somebody else is going to be. So that might be more detrimental for the United States. And everybody has their own, uh, not, not, not for the United States only, but for the world. Everybody has their opinion on that. There's people that, you know, don't want war, don't want any type of intervention. That was Donald J. Trump. But he did it in a, in, in, in a manner where he exercised or he portrayed strength um, without uh, obviously looking weak and wanted to. No, no wars at all whatsoever. A, a U.S. president, Donald J. Trump, the the the, the dictator of 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 <laughs> a dictator, right? A guy who was gonna do this and do that, and we're gonna get into war, and it's gonna be done in war. As conservative, I'm not conservatives. Liberals were saying or, or were imagining, most likely in in the beginning stages of his presidency, he did not want new wars. Also, a when he got the um, what was it the uh a Nobel Peace Prize, he was um, nominated for what they call the Trump Doctrine, which is a, 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 a doctrine or a belief of Donald J. Trump that he didn't want to intervene militarily anywhere. And that points us straight to number two, which was that he wanted to bring the troops back from wherever they were. Why did American boys had to go die in a desert in Afghanistan or in the Middle East? Why? Why? Donald Trump didn't find that correctly. He got criticized for, for pulling out troops. There were some people, no, we got to leave troops here. Leave tro Donald Trump was like, no, let them police themselves. Let our boys come back. Let them police themselves. I think it's, it's an idea worth trying out. The United States has been the police of the world. Why do they have to keep being the police of the world? I understand, okay, if they're, they're not the police of the world, somebody else might be, and it might be more detrimental for the world as a whole. But again, can we try something different? Can we let the people in the Middle East police themselves and let our boys, we don't have to send uh, uh, our, our boy, a boy from Florida or some boy from Nebraska to go die in the desert in the Middle East. Number three, he managed unthinkable peace deals or accords in the Middle East regarding Israel. Obviously, everybody knows the Middle East is a highly volatile area. People, a lot of countries hate Israel. They do not recognize Israel as a sovereign nation. Donald Trump was able to pull up four different agreements with Middle East nations who are going to normalize relationships now with the state of Israel. Incredible. If you tell me that's something that is bad, he also had, and I didn't even list this. He had, he also had the, the strength, right, to name Jerusalem the everlasting capital of Israel. 
and move the embassy over there. Nobody did that. Nobody did that. Everybody, all the presidents before him were signing extension. No, extension, extension. He was like, no, we're doing it and we're doing it right now. Number four, a booming economy. Booming economy that everybody benefit. People that had money in the stock market, people that had... 401ks saw massive gains stock market uh records constantly uh and now let's get that that's wall street how about main street unemployment in record lows which was actually that was one of my other points um that was gonna be point number seven but you're getting it here now right unemployment at record lows linked directly to the economy that was doing good prior and you, and you i don't know why you have to say this prior to vid because that's another thing. They're trying to blame vid on <laughs> President Donald Trump. But that's another topic for another day. Everybody that's logical. Anybody that, and, and that's another point. Anybody that brings and blames vid19 on President Trump is a partisan a person. A, par a, per a person that is not interested in truth. But a person that is there for a particular agenda. Number five. Did you remember of North Korea? Whatever happened to North Korea? Was the relationship weird? Yes, I found that relationship weird. To be honest, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. I found that relationship weird. The letters sending, but did it work? Did it did the effect of North Korea calming down? One hundred and ten percent. No questions asked. President Donald Trump calmed down North Korea. Unorthodox. One hundred percent. But did it work? 100%. North Korea is not going crazy out in the uh, Korean Peninsula. And, and, and we have Donald J. Trump to t uh, take care of that, right? He, did, what, he was calling him, uh, what was it, um, Rocket Boy or Rocket Man, <laughs> which is crazy. But that, that let the people know that Donald Trump is not playing around. That's another thing that I probably should mention it and put a number and, and add it in there somewhere. Donald J. Trump was not a chump. He made the United States be respected. He had, he, he, he did what he was going to say. He tried to do what he was going to say. And he was feared, to be honest. No playing around with America when Donald J. Trump was president. At number six, do you remember the, these four letters? I-S-I-S, -I -S, ISIS. Do you remember ISIS? Yeah, because I don't either. Ob obliterated ISIS, Donald J. Trump. Obliterated ISIS. Obliterated ISIS gave the ability for the military to do what they do you remember under the obama administration isis decapitating people constant decapitations of people constant people getting killed there is no more isis and number seven like i said was unemployment at all time low, which i linked it to a booming economy all these things if anybody cannot mention anything that donald trump did good it's somebody who has been poisoned by the lies of, of the mainstream media, plain and simple. I, I, and I hate to sound so cliche, uh, but it's just the truth. It's just like the mainstream media, an extension of the Democratic Party, has been able to successfully um, successfully uh, infiltrate the minds and, and poison the minds of people. And they, they don't give them the chance to uh, actually um, think clearly, to be honest. Now let's get to... The more honest part, which is the ugly of Donald J. Trump. Donald J. Trump had one thing that was bad. That's it. If you take these accomplishments, right, and you write them down, and, and you don't account to his character, you're going to be like, wow, this was one of the all-time greatest presidents. In four years, he did all this stuff? Yeah, in four years, he did all this stuff. But in comes the part that, in my opinion, did him in. And that was the flaws, the character flaws that President Donald J. Trump has. Every human being on earth has certain problems. His problems in particular were, were his character flaws. He did things that he wasn't supposed to do. He said things in particular that he wasn't supposed to say. And his character was a character that was not a, a, a you need to baby certain individuals. Me and you, he, we had no problem with his character, right? Or the way he did things sometimes. He, but I, I, I personally, and I know you too, had certain problems with certain things that he did. But for the most part, you understood that the guy was doing all these great things. And okay, he has these flaws. Hey, no wars, no this. I'll take a guy that is not going to plunge um, the country into war if he's um, not going to, um, if he's just going to have character flaws, right? In my opinion. 
but his character didn't. Um, the media was able to latch onto that. He he personally himself gave him talking points, and um, that that was what did him in at the end of the day. Um, that is gonna be the the complexity of the Donald Trump presidency. In my opinion, um, Donald J. Trump was a great president. I think uh, history is probably going to treat him well because history doesn't record uh, too much character. They just remember what the people did as as uh, human beings, right? And I think history will treat Donald J. Trump well because of all these things that were accomplished in this very short period of four years. And who knows if there's going to be another uh, term for the president since he's able to run. Bonus. <laughs> bonus, bonus, bonus. Point number eight. Unquestionably, undoubtedly. Donald J. Trump was a, a pro-life president like no other. Donald J. Trump protected the sanctity of life. And if I'm not mistaken, I think January 22, he named it. Um, and maybe somebody could correct me in the comments for uh, he named it like in honor of the sanctity of life. He was pro-life. He was uh, even though they say that when he was a Democrat, he was um pro-abortion, et cetera, et cetera. This, these last couple of years show that he's pro-life and that he was uh, willing to say what he had to do in defense of a human life, right? If if the people that are living us, who are able to talk, who are able to defend themselves, don't defend the people that are less defensible in society, there's nothing less defensible than a human life. That's actually, that's supposed to be a left talking point. They're supposed to quote unquote stand up for the people that can defend themselves. That's, that's their, their, their supposedly their political uh, ideology, except if they're in the womb. Donald J. Trump saw that and he protected human life. Very adamant. I'm interested to know what are your thoughts on the legacy of Donald J. Trump. Let me know in the comments, guy. I'm going to ask you guys a favor and it's to please share. Share this um, thoughts, share this video because Do um, not Donald J. Trump. YouTube is not promoting my videos at all. So I need your help with that, guys. And it's only going to happen. That I want this channel to grow, but it's only going to happen with the help of you guys. Hit that like button and share. God bless. God speed me, Valentine. I am out.